Hi and welcome back to Sagat Hunter's YouTube channel. I want to go on and do some more paper reviews. And a while back I got this pad of paper in one of my local stores. It is a hobby store I go to sometimes and they got some art materials and I saw they got this. This is Sakura manga paper. It's an A4 pad. You can get them in A5 and A3 at least also. But A4 is suitable for me. It's a Bristol paper. It's 20 sheet. It's 250 GSM or 145 pounds. And it's very smooth paper. On the back here it says it's Bristol quality paper specially developed for making manga sketches and drawings. It's ideal for ink, felt tip pen, watercolor, gouache, airbrush, pencil and charcoal. The watercolor and gouache is a little bit of a surprise because that's not usually things you think about when you think Bristol paper. Uh, it got this nice manga drawing on the front. Um, on the inside, it's very smooth. It is super slick on both sides. It's maybe a little more smooth on the front than on the back, but there's really not much difference on them. On the so, I um, I haven't got an airbrush, but I got pretty much everything else that is mentioned. It is good for ink. Felt tip pens, I got some markers, I guess that's what they mean. And of course, I have actually cheated a little bit. I got my Koi coloring brush pens. And if you saw my video where I went on a rant about watercolor markers, you would know that I've had a hard time finding paper that worked well with, with those. So I actually went and tried them out on this paper. And one thing that didn't happen was it didn't peel, which was, of course, fantastic. It, the, the sky here is darker than I wanted it to be. I can't remove the, the, the scribble lines with water. And I added too much water and I tried to add more uh, uh, marker onto the paper and I thought it was gonna pill because the surface seems to to raise and I left it to dry and it It got a little bit rough, but it didn't pill at all. It didn't ruin the, the paper anywhere here where this little View tower is I've actually had quite a few layers of color um, And it didn't pill it didn't raise what it did do, and what is very obvious, is it streaks quite bad. I'd say if you, you do smaller detailed things, then it's fine. But for coloring in larger areas, it's a little tricky. I would, if I was to do this over again, I would paint the, the ink out on, on plastic and then just paint it on as, as watercolor. Um, but it, it was it was okay but but quite streaky so that was the koi watercolor pens pens that i tested i have a uh, video footage of it but it took too long so i won't include that in this video the base of the the this draw little drawing was i sketched it out with a pencil and that went quite nicely and I I marked it up with a Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen and that went fantastic too. I even started lining it up from over here. I went that way and I put my hand through the drawing I already did and it didn't smear. So the ink part was quite good as well. And I raised my, my pencil lines and that went well as well. I didn't smear the graphite anywhere. It just went off with the, the eraser. 
just quite nicely. So my experience this far has been really nice with this. So what I want to do is sketch something up and try some of the other things that was mentioned. Uh, that I want to try the, some markers. I picked out some markers and I already decided on a kind of a sketch I want to do. I want to see if I can sketch out a, a little goldfish. Um, I'm not going to use a a reference photo. I'm going to try and see if I can do a decent one from memory. It's a little short in the head, but... Gills and... I think I'll make it a, a fancy Miranda type. Back fin here is going like something like that. And then it has a double tail. That curves downwards and it has four. There's a little fin in there that sticks in there and then it has oh my goodness, how many does it have? It has four here. Uh, I think it's mid body that is attached. And then it has a pectoral fin here that it is actually swimming with. So. That eye is up way too high on the body. And the gills is wrong. So see how nicely the, it erases. Change that whole head. Thing. That gotta be okay. So let's uh, let's ink this up. And I bought these uh, Copic multiliners a while back, and back in November, I think. And I haven't used them, so let's try and and use these for inking. I'm gonna do this as a fairly loose sketch because if I don't hurry. You guys are gone before I'm done. I'll wave that a little bit. Keep the I know I do not necessarily always follow my sketch when I line something up. When I sketch, I just kind of indicate what I want and approximately where I want it. And then I sometimes change my mind when I go and line it up afterwards so that uh, it looks a little angry I know it's kind of a grumpy little fish 
Let's see if we can change that. That seems to be okay. So let's erase the pencil lines. Let's see how much I forgot to line up. Quite a bit. But it's okay. I can always add more later. I smeared that a little bit. But it was also kind of a big goop of stuff of ink that I left there. But overall, that erased nicely. It was nice to draw on. And um, it, was, it was quite okay. So, that was... I have just picked some random... Or, not at all at random, but... I picked colors, not um, brand. So I need an orangey kind of base color. So uh, let me take this one. That should be kind of a mid-tone. Well, very bright. Well, I don't seem to smear that Cobic and I'm quite happy about that because that was why I bought it it was because Cobic makes markers as you probably know that's what they're most famous for and their fine liners should be for doing exactly what I've done here doing line art for marker work this is a bit dry I should probably look into getting some more ink. Oh, I think it, it maybe it does pick up a little bit. It does seem to go a little gray. I'm not a marker artist, so I'm not even going to pretend that I know what I'm doing here. But it seems to take the Oh, that goes through. I better. I'll put the pad away so I don't ruin the next page. It bleeds through, but that's to be expected from alcohol markers, so I will not hold that against it. It is not a marker paper as such where they have a special backing on it to, to prevent it from bleeding onto the next page. I do know that lots of marker artists do use Bristol paper for their work because marker paper is, paper is really thin in itself. Yeah, and now uh, go outside the lines and stuff. This marker is almost out of ink. Uh, makes things more streaky than they have to have. But it's very absorbent, this paper, so it, I'd say all kinds of markers will streak some on this. No, I don't mind it streaking down here in the fins because I forgot to put on the the fin rays in here. looks angry so let's try and do some shading here
this part it's been quite pleasant with everything I've tried it with. The ink went down nice, the this is going down just fine as well. But absolutely have to take it out of the the path because I'm not sure if, if I keep layering I'm quite sure it will, would bleed through to the the next page Sorry for moving it, but these scales I'm planning on putting on requires my hand to move like that, and I hate doing curves the other way. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being quiet. I'm trying to focus on doing this somewhat right so it doesn't look too ridiculous when I'm done. I think my next project could be fish. I've been doing birds for a couple of years now and I can just feel that I'm burning out a little bit on that. But I always liked fish. I have had fish tanks for the past, oh my goodness, 20 some odd years. I worked at a pet store where my specialty was the aquarium and pond fish. So I've seen my share of fish in my time. Not the best uh, drawing I ever did, but it was fast. And that was like the third layer of a marker on some of this. So let's see how how much that will bleed through at the end. It looks like an angry dragon actually. So, yeah, it doesn't come all the way through. 
um, but almost. It is very visible, at least. So, so markers, ink, and graphite is okay. At least graphite, as in when you use it to uh, to sketch. I um, I think I'll add a plant here. fish tanks. You often use these uh, plants that look somewhat like grass. They're called Valsinaria and they have this undulating quality to them. So I better ink that up as well so we kind of keep the, the style going. I could have done that without the pencil first. But I didn't. So I actually made a coloring page with a Miranda a long while ago. I had it on my Facebook page for a long time. And I don't think anybody downloaded it. Maybe I should dust it off and try again. So, this time I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to find some colored pencils that could work for this. I got a green and a olive or something. These are pencils I picked out for a different project. Dark sapphire. Uh, that I got sitting here. So it's a little bit of a mixture of of brands because I picked Colors, not so much anything else. Let's try and erase those pencils again. This is a darn eraser and it makes a lot of residues. I'll shake this off. Vacuum clean, vacuum clean one of the next days. Anyways, so that is fairly, fairly clean. So let's go on. Now this is a color soft and that is usually not super good for smooth paper. So I'm not gonna try and layer this a lot. I'm just gonna put it's kind of a mid-tone green. That goes okay. So this is uh, wow, that is nearly black. This is a luminance pencil. Uh, this is a dark green, and it's nearly too dark for this. That goes down okay too. It it doesn't it does show the the structure of the paper a little bit, the tooth. The, what little tooth is here. 
so I would probably have to burnish it if I wanted to get rid of that or use some solvent because I don't think I get very many layers on this paper but yeah it's it's usable for some colored pencil I'm not gonna do a, a great big super test right now I want to try different medias and yeah color pencil goes on to it okay um, I might try and make a proper drawing on it and, and make a, a real field test and see how how many layers can we actually get on here and maybe try it with some solvent but it has to be a day where I can open the window so I can air out while I play with solvents It's a bit dark green for for this plant, but hey, I'm just playing around. Trying to burnish it in a little bit, the color I got on here. And I'm leaving a little bit of white for highlights. I didn't do that on the fish, I should have. I didn't. I guess we could go in and, and do some stuff on the fish with colored pencil if I wanted to. I'm not going to right now because that would make the video way too long. But this is a nice and versatile um, paper. Absolutely. Um, it, uh, it feels okay to, to use. The ink, the graphite, the marker, the colored pencil, it's been just playing nicely. It, it even played nice enough with those Koi watercolors, color pens. It's not cheap paper. I'd say it's mid-range price. But I, I quite like it. But then again, all the Bristol I've, I've tried on this far, I actually like. So maybe I should try some more. Oh, then, let me try and make a background with watercolor because I know better than trying to do that with any kind of pencil or marker. It drives me insane. So, thank you for your show, little pencils. You better hop back in your thing there. Markers, you can hop over to one side and take the pencil. So, this is my Windsor & Newton set of watercolors. The art is great. As it didn't pull out the cotton. So what color should I put in the back here? I think it will be a golden green color. Because fish tanks are never blue. If they are, it's because you put a blue background on there. But they can be this kind of greenish color because it's often that there are algae in there. And that colors the water. It starts to curve a little bit now where it gets wet. 
but I know from my test with the koi pens that it will it straightens out fairly okay when it when it dries up. Yeah, that, this is actually decent. You have to be very careful where you place your pigments because it stays on the surface. It's not sinking into the the paper the way watercolors do on mm, most watercolor papers. It does take a lot of water though. It soaks up the, the water from my brush. I have to reload it. And I'll just go over the water, the color pencil here, and the marker, toning everything into my background color. So yeah, so far so good. I got a list here in front of me saying ink, felt tip pens, got ink, got felt tip pens, watercolor, gouache. I'll skip gouache because that will work pretty much the same way as watercolor with the exception of being uh, opaque so it doesn't make much sense. I can't try airbrush because I haven't got one. Pencil we have tried and so we, I just got the, the charcoal left. I will let it dry and then I'll fill in the, the pebbles at the bottom here in, in black charcoal. And I'd say things that take charcoal well often takes uh, soft pastels quite well as well because they got kind of the same quality to them. I'll be right back when it's dried. So I want to show you how it dried up. It curves a little bit but it's really minimal. And I don't really have much boggling. I could uh, just iron this flat with a, a not too warm iron if I wanted to or place it under a book or something. It is really impressive how little it boggled. I got this little stump of natural charcoal and I'm just gonna put some pebbles in. I'm gonna do that a little bit where I haven't done anything to the paper yet. This works just beautiful. And it smears nicely as well as it should. I'm not sure if this will stay well on the, the paper. It will need a good layer of fixative for sure. Yeah, it smears out just fine. I'll go back and, and fill in that that I smeared, but I'm going to smear the whole thing to make it a one coherent thing so it all looks the same. And because the surface is so smooth, it, all lines stand out really nice and sharp, both for the ink but also for this charcoal. So, absolutely just fine and well defined. So, 
Even though this isn't, isn't sold as a mixed media paper, it, it works well for it. And I would really recommend it for anybody who wants to do different things, either in one piece or in different pieces. If you are doing different kinds of medias, this is absolutely a very nice and versatile type of paper. And even go in and do some shading here on top of this. It comes off a little bit more on on the marker. But yeah, that's uh, a really really nice paper that I would recommend highly to, to anybody who think they would like a smooth surface to work on. I would really like to make maybe a black and white ink uh, fine liner drawing on, on this paper, uh, similar to the ones I did in the Inktober, because this paper takes those lines so well. And um, yeah, I am... Um, I think I'll try and add just a little bit more uh, color to, to here, just to see, yeah, glazing on top of the other color goes smooth nicely on. It's absorbing, so uh, it will make the dry lines uh, if you try. If you're not wetting the paper before you add the color, got a dry line over there. I'll zoom in and show you. Oops, move it down. See you there. And it doesn't really lift, and that means the paper is quite absorbent. And that makes it kind of give that marbly effect. You can use it as an effect, but if you want a smooth application, make a wash and p wet the paper before you add the paint or go over it really quickly. Zoom out again. So, yeah, great paper. I like this. Absolutely like it. And I don't mind that the background has that kind of marbled effect to it. I think it lends to keeping the eye busy and interested. I don't like flat wash as much. I think they're kind of boring. So it's difficult to, to make a, a flat wash on this paper because the, the paint is sitting on top of the surface. So it kind of just stays where you put it. So for watercoloring, this takes either some some forgiveness from the painter or a skilled skilled painter to to get smooth 
applications on here. There we go. I can't think of anything else really I want to say about this paper other than buy it if you see it. It's rarely I, I have no critiques, but I, I can't say anything negative about this paper whatsoever. The price is reasonable, at least where I bought it. And I think for for something that is not a watercolor paper, it takes water really well. And as the actually as the market dried up, it 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 doesn't it doesn't look streaky at all anymore, other than where I made it streaky with different colors. But look at I like the belly there where that was really streaky in the beginning. It it dried up really nicely. So um, I. Yeah, I got nothing negative to say, and I'm really, really happy. So, thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful, and like and subscribe. Bye-bye.